following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. From Hollywood. This is Ed McMahon along with Doc Severinsen of the NBC Orchestra inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Sammy Davis Jr., Diane Keats, Freddie Prinze, and Irma Bombeck. And now, here's Johnny. Settle down. I'm Johnny Carson, not the Exxon Tiger. <laughs> kind of fidgety tonight, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> You're not used to wearing long underwear, are you? <laughs> this is a good group. I was listening Great to you crowd. Yes. Got your lips puckered and everything. You want a kiss or are you been siphoning gas? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Boy, that, uh, that'll, that'll set you free, that outfit. Yeah. I gotta look like an endangered species. <laughs> <laughs> Too endangered. What is that? What is that mixture? Never mind that. I got a whip and a chair that go with this outfit. <laughs> what is that? Mimeograph rampant or something? Or what? <laughs> Leopard. That's not real, though. Of course not. Tell them it's not real because you're not supposed to do that anymore, right? No. But that's real tiger on the bar. <laughs> say it, say it's not. It's not real. No, it's not real. Okay. Because we got a, there are not many left. No. Not many of him left, either. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, the news has been terrible lately. Yeah. People are, are depressed. So tonight, I'm not going to do any jokes about Watergate. I'm not going to do any jokes about the energy crisis. I'm not going to do any jokes about gas rationing or inflation. So good night. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing left. I thought I heard you introduce Tommy before yes. you go. I never know when Tommy's with us. Uh, <laughs> He's with us. <laughs> Neither do we. Neither do you? Tom, I can't make jokes about Tommy. Tommy is just not a... I don't know, how should I phrase it? A born, a born loser. Yeah. You know what he did today? He shaved with one of those two-track razors, and both blades missed the whisker. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's... Uh... <laughs> well, what else is... Uh... If I sound a little... Uh... Nasal tonight. I'm fighting a cold, so forgive me. I've got a head full of cotton. You're in. Did you take your pill again? Yeah. Oh. Strange pill. <laughs> supposed to dry you up. It dries everything. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone. It'll be a week Sunday. <laughs> um, do you know when's the date for daylight savings time? Not set. Not set. Could be before the first of the year. Well, I think before this month is out, we're going to go back on daylight saving times. One more hour of daylight. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Great, I love it. That'll give us an extra hour to look for our stolen bicycles. <laughs> uh, did you read that the... You know who's really affected by the energy crisis? We haven't talked about? The farmers. They have had to turn off their electric milking machines. And uh, now they're turning the cows on by hand again. Just like, yeah. <laughs> you know, they find that they're getting more milk now that they're emotionally involved? <laughs> That's true. Well, let's see. It's not easy to find things in the news that are much fun. The auto industry, as you know, is having all kinds of troubles. Uh, I guess GM has cut back. Ford has cut back. Nobody wants to buy big cars anymore. That may be one of the great things that comes out of this whole thing, you know? If we can do away with those big cars yeah. and go back to a 2,000-pound car, I think we're going to be a lot better off. There's a dealer out in the valley that's really having trouble, Cadillac dealer. You know what he's doing? He's letting the air out of the tires, and he's offering them as condominiums. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's doing, all right. <laughs> Guess where they sighted the latest UFO? Not in this country. Northern Italy. Mysterious flying objects in northern Italy. You can't believe all of them, though, because one guy said he saw this giant saucer with pepperoni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> with a big four-foot anchovy on it. So. <laughs> Wouldn't put too much... Uh... Anyway, tonight, did you tell them what we have? Y yes. Sammy Davis is here tonight. We have... Uh... Yeah. We have uh... 
Diane Keaton, who's a strange young lady, most talented. A new young comedian. We're always looking for new young uh, comedy people. Freddie Prinz is with us tonight, his first time on The Tonight Show. And a fascinating, charming lady, Irma Bombeck, who writes a syndicated column around the country. She's a journalist, an author, and she's just charming. So what else do we have? Are we doing something else? That's it. That's enough. Are there any questions? <laughs> Never get any questions. Beg your pardon? When are you off? <laughs> <laughs> you want to open your big mouth, right? <laughs> ask for questions. I had to ask for questions. I get a hostile lady. Where are you? <laughs> I'm getting sick of you. I'm not going to ask that anymore. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back after this word. <laughs> For years, I've been telling you what a really nutritious and great-tasting breakfast cereal Product 19 is. Well, now there's a new Product 19. New because it has more nutrition, so much more that it's now classified as a multivitamin and iron supplement cereal with 100% of the U.S. recommended daily allowances for 10 vitamins and iron. All that nutrition in great-tasting flakes. Enjoy the multivitamin and iron supplement cereal, Kellogg's new Product 19. Take a good look at your wood paneling. It looks dull and faded. Well, Scott's Liquid Gold was specially formulated for wood paneling that has been dried out by heat, air conditioning, and sunlight. It's not a cover-up, but goes down below the surface to restore and preserve the natural beauty of fine wood. Liquid Gold cleans away dirt and helps hide scratches and water stains. Remember, for best results, don't use wax after using Liquid Gold. Use Liquid Gold regularly in aerosol or liquid. going to happen one night. What's going to happen one night? One night I'm going to wear my green suit. I went out and ordered a green suit, but I haven't had the courage to wear it yet. It doesn't take courage it to wear a suit like this. To wear, I don't know, but green must be the in color, because I said, took a flyer, and all of a sudden I see that you have one. Why not? One night. Because that's the way I feel tonight, in here. You're, you've got a green feeling. Oh, oh I, you, I can't hear myself. You took a new pill? What's yeah, I don't know, a uh, scadmal bottle or something like that. It's <laughs> supposed to dry you up, but your brain shrivels. <laughs> and I can't hear myself. Can you, can you hear? Yeah, obviously can yeah, hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, yes. I if you can't... start to talk and we don't hear it, then I'll tell you. <clears throat> no, but the, like the ears are plugged up and I'm talking, but it's like you're in a, in a vacuum or yeah. something. Very strange. Um, anything to report? Nothing to report. Thing. I was with uh, one of your guests last night to the wee hours. Mr. Davis was into... Uh, the town, Las Vegas, last night. We were watching Joe Williams. Now, that's oh, a nice street. Oh, he's up there, isn't he? That's a nice street, yeah. So you're staying up late? Well, of course, you get off, you finish the show about quarter or two. I can't go to bed right then. A Why person not? can't put his body into a bed right at that point. <laughs> Why not? It takes a while, you know, to get down from that high. You're up there. Certainly. And, you know, oh, you're up course. having fun and so forth. So, and Joe Williams happens to be in the lounge. You know how fond but I you am. You just go right in there. Right into the lounge. Bill Vaughn, who's a uh, AP editor, had a column uh, this week on. Uh, on curses, you know, been curses have been through the ages when people get steamed. Um, little things you can say. Here's some he has in this. May you be humiliated by a burglar who breaks into your house and doesn't find anything worth taking. Mm. May your children form a rock group and rehearse in your living room. These are mild now, that's why I'm reading yeah. these mild ones. May you be drafted by the Houston Oilers. <laughs> 
May you marry somebody who agrees with you all the time. As long as you live, may there never again be any cheese with your apple pie. Hmm. See, those are mild curses, but the pot... I, I like it, but what I like about it is amazing in one article how you could cover all the possible curses that you could ever have. I mean, that actually, that one article, that little piece well, of paper says everything in the world you could say about curses. Well, Mr. Vaughn has the right idea, but unfortunately he is uh, not aware. I'm sure he's aware of all the things that are going on today right. with inflation and blackouts and food strikes we have you out mean there here. are other curses? Government problems. You, we need more fitting... More violent curses that you can it's say. Shame we don't have any here. Yes, we do. Oh, right we do. here. <laughs> you know, there's a time to live, a time to die, yes. a time to sow, a time to reap, and a time to get steamed. Right. So, here's some curses for 1973. Right. May you swell up from the waist down. <laughs> May the only hair on your body be ingrown. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> May the best feature on your face have to be lanced. <laughs> I mean, those that's are... A, that's a curse. May you live alone and find writing on your toilet paper. <laughs> May your hat size go from six and seven-eighths to ten and an eighth by sundown. <laughs> May the best thing you drink all day be barium. Ooh. Ooh. That's a bad Did you ever have one of those yes, uh, barium X-ray jobs? Yes. Oh, they give you that stuff? Oh. Those, I can tell by the moans, the people who've been through that. Oh. It's like drinking a swamp. Yeah. It is the worst <laughs> stuff. May the only job you can hold down be test pilot for Preparation H. <laughs> <laughs> That's a violent curse. May you turn down your thermostat to 68 at night and the next morning have to be chipped out of your water bed. <laughs> <laughs> May your only daughter's first bra have three cups. <laughs> May you find the milkman's toupee under your wife's pillow. <laughs> May you be on a quiz show and be asked to name all President Nixon's attorney generals. <laughs> That'd be a tough one. <laughs> this one is rather long, but it it's really sums it all up. May your Christmas dinner take place in an open field near El Segundo. <laughs> And may it be a rusty can of beans, and may you have to share it with an old man with three teeth because he owns the spoon. That's it. That's the it abomination all. of desolation. Uh, tonight, we, as I mentioned, we have uh, Diane Keaton with us, and we have Sammy Davis, we have Freddie Prince, we have uh, Miss Irma Bombeck, Mrs. Bombeck, I believe it is. And uh, we'll do this first. A uh, word about J. Marsh Lacks, and we shall return. Today, men's fashion offers so much variety, it's difficult to know what's the right look for you. But in the new J. Marsh Slack fashion collection, we think you'll agree there's plenty there that's just your style. Take J. Marr's patterns and colors, for instance. Not too sure you can wear a plaid? J. Marr has one for you in its fashion collection. Want a solid, but with some zing? Jamar introduces 49 new shades created just for fall. Now let's look at Jamar's cut, starting with a deep cuff and a balanced flare, to the new welded pocket and tunnel belt loops, all in your choice of poly knits, stretch wovens, or wool. And now you can top it off with a Jamar sport coat, perfectly tailored in the Jamar tradition. They look great, feel great, just like Jamar slacks. Your nearest fine men's or department store will be glad to show you their Jmar fashion collection. And remember, Jmar slacks and Jmar sport coats are made by people who care, for people who care. Jmar Ruby Incorporated, Michigan City, Indiana.
My first guest has been with us, uh, I would suppose, about a half a dozen times, and she's, uh, she's rather shy, very unique and charming, and she is about to open in a motion picture called Sleeper, which is by Woody Allen. And she's a fine actress. She was also in The Godfather. Would you welcome Diane Keaton? <laughs> No, I was going to give you a little you. kiss on the cheek, and I said, no, I won't do that, because I have a little bit of a... That's, oh, I'm sorry. You well, it's one of those things. Yeah, that's life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get about one cold a year is all. One? I've been very lucky. Yeah? I can't remember the last time, and it just shows up, and uh, that's well, it. Well, that's... I'm glad it only happens once a year. Too bad at Christmas, right? Yeah, it's a bad time Yeah, of well, year. you know, that's life again. No, that's, <laughs> that, that's my gift for being lousy, I guess, the rest of the year. <laughs> No, there's a new strain, isn't there, coming in, the uh, flu, or the doctors are worried about or something? Like the one they had, the London flu one year, and then the Asian flu, and... Oh, I, hey, I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah. I should, but I don't. Well, I didn't mean it. It was a yeah. rhetorical question, anyway. Yeah, uh, well, I'm sure it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's your health? My health? I feel pretty good. I'm doing all right. Yeah. You ever been sick at all? Did you ever get sick? Yeah, I used to as a youth. I had asthma. You know, I was one of those ones. Oh, that's, that's murder. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's awful. I mean, it's really Did awful. Did you just you grow out of it or what? Yeah, I grew out of it. Yeah. And then I got something else, you know? Well, what'd you get? <laughs> Neurotic. Neurotic? No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Would you rather have asthma yeah. or be neurotic? Well, well, absolutely. At least for asthma, they can send you to Arizona for neurotic. I don't know what, what, what they yeah, send you. Yeah, there's no cure. Hollywood, I guess. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just become a real enormous monster, yeah. When did you first think you were neurotic? Uh, well, hmm, hmm, yeah. Well, I would say, poo. Long time ago, I would say, could even be in junior high. I had inklings that I was not doomed for the best of all lives. Yeah, you know? but things are going good. We haven't seen you for a long yeah. time. What have you been doing? Oh, that's right. Well, um, uh, uh, well, I, I did these, I... Uh, You've been gone longer than I thought. I've been gone a long time. <laughs> so much has happened, you just, there's just something buzz running around. <laughs> It was oh, a little uh, no, nap. these things happen. No, I was, uh, I, you know, I've been around. I, I live in New York. And I know you've been around, Diane. <laughs> I know that. Not that way. No. But, no, I did those movies. You, know, you I did, did Sleeper. That, I did Sleeper with Woody. And then I just finished doing The Godfather with uh, those, those guys. You Is know? that The Godfather Revisited or Godfather 2? It's The Godfather 2, yeah. So He's I'm through, but... You still play the same I play, character that you played in the first? <laughs> I play another one. Yeah. Yeah, I played the same one, yeah. 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 I'm well, married to the same guy and all that. Yeah, you were married to uh, Pacino, Al Pacino yeah. in the picture, right? Yeah. Was it as much fun making this one as it was the first one? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> no, it, it was fun. Lots of fun things happened during oh, the making of the picture, I suppose. Oh, it was just fabulous. Fun, lots yeah. of fun. Yeah. Uh. But... Uh, <laughs> I'm as articulate as ever, can't you? No, know? no, it just takes a little while for you to open up. I think you, you want to. If the wanting is there, you no. Know, I don't know, hey, you know. I don't know if I do want to. Yeah. I mean, don't you think I'd be better if I wanted to? Don't you think that I'd be much more articulate if I really wanted to be more articulate? Or not? I think you're articulate. I think you find it sometimes difficult to, to, when you're here to express yourself. I bet when you're alone... Uh, when uh, I'm <laughs> no, I meant with a, not. I mean not on television, sitting in a room with somebody else. You yeah. find conversation easy? Oh yeah, me and my cats all the time. You know, we just you have many, cats. many serious conversations. Yeah. How many cats do you have? Two. Two. Yeah. Two. Two well, cats. Do you have any pets? Uh, <laughs> no, I. You, no, I did have a dog. I don't. I don't yeah. like cats. Yeah, I don't. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm American. Now, you're not supposed that. to say that. No, that's okay. But I do not I like cats. Why, you don't have to. Because cats, you can't... Cats are so damn independent. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I feed uh, an animal, um, human being or any kind of an animal, and I want to say, come here, animal, I want that animal to come here. <laughs> I mean, that's all. Or do, do a backflip, and I want the animal to do a backflip into the wastebasket <laughs> or do something. But cats just sit there and lie on the television or the radiator where it's warm, and, and they don't do anything. They just look at you. They don't give you any affection. You try to pet a cat, they scratch you half of the time, right? Oh. Mine did. Mine did. <laughs> See what I mean? Right away. <laughs> they turn on you fast. Well, uh, do, you tra do you travel with your cats? I have to. I mean, what else can I do? I, you know, I can't leave them in the apartment for three months. 
Why not? No, I mean, of course, of course you can't. <laughs> no, a little humor there, America. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. Of course you, you wouldn't do that to an animal. Uh, well, how about the neighbors? The neighbors? Uh, hey, I, you know, they, uh, I don't know who my neighbors are. Oh, well, that's I, no I, good then. You know, I'm in this apartment building and I, I don't Can't you put them in a, don't they have these kennels? Uh, oh, no, I, I couldn't do that, no. You know, I don't know. I, I just... Uh, so you travel with them? Just bring them in that kitty carrying case and, you know... Wherever you go? Watch them, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you carry cats aboard an airplane? Yeah, yeah. It's a, an enormous hassle uh, because, you know... So, yes, you can. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's, that's all I was yeah. looking for. <laughs> you can carry the cats yeah. aboard an airplane. Yes, right. yes. Well, don't, they don't like that, though, I guess. They aren't thrilled, you know. They aren't just absolutely pleased to see you with two cats and the thing is i always have a big bag and you have to put them under your seat and they they hate it you know and they have a tendency to throw up and <laughs> do other wonderful little things that people in front of you don't enjoy oh, i can understand you know, that too much why don't you get rid of them if I oh i can't get rid of are them. are you either. attached to them really oh yeah i happen to be attached to them i'm one of you know i have that i've turned into one of those women you know yeah. Those, you can end up with those old ladies yeah, that keep 400 right. cats in the house. 400 cats and no relationships, just a lot of animals, you know, and no human beings, just very, very insane. You know, what are their locked names? Up in a room. Their names are Bill and Blanche. Bill and Blanche. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a very yeah. good name for cats. And Blanche is exactly like Blanche Dubois. I mean, in she's totally street insane. Street Garden Desire? Yes. Yeah. And Bill is your average cat. <laughs> He's your average cat, you know, gray. Are these, uh, I don't know much about, are they purebred, like, you know, the oh, Siamese, or are these, are these just cats? They are very cat-like. No, they're just nothing, you know? They're your ugly, you know, cats. Did somebody leave them on your... Uh... One, well, This is one... the way people usually get rid of cats, you know? They put yeah. them on people's doorsteps, or they just leave them. Well, that, that didn't exactly happen to me, but oh. um, something maybe similar. Like I picked them up at the pound, you know, like that. It's not quite the same. Not, no, actually, it's, it's not quite the same. That means you have to go get them, otherwise... <laughs> somebody left them. That's, a, that's a lot left. different, you see. You, you said it was similar. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, sure, right. Well, I, I tell you, this is swell. Yeah. Well, what else? So, so what else has been happening? Now, you've oh, done the two just movies? just everything. I mean, it's just been grand. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> I just have to ferret this out. You just hey, make me work a little something. bit when I talk I with you, that's all. No, I want to tell you something. I, now, I'll tell you something. Okay. I saw you in real life. Just the other day. That's right. Listen, Johnny, excuse me. Are you sure you're not hearing any of this? I thought... Uh, <laughs> you can't hear any of this? I thought I heard she said you just saw me in real I life. I did. You were in Saks Fifth Avenue, and it was just the most incredible thing. I, it was just, you know, there you were with your wife, I assume. I think it was your wife. I don't know. I think, I mean, Yes, that obviously. was my wife. Yeah, and I guess you were there Christmas shopping like any other human being. It was. No, really I was just dropping off some cats, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was there. Why didn't you come over and say hi? Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? Oh, no, shoot. I would never do that, you know. But I did take a good look at you, and I said, that's him. That's that guy. That's that well, one. you've seen me a dozen yeah. times. You've I been know, here. I but I wouldn't approach you in the, you know, in a store. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, that would be sort of like, oh, well, hi, yeah, hi. Well, I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't have bothered me. No? Oh, Not well, that's bit. nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. We're, we're going to take a break, and we're coming right back. You, oh, I thought you were leaving. No. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm working on you, Diane. It's going to take a little time. Uh, we try. We try hard. <laughs> Nothing wrong with I'll that. I'll never lose. No, that's all right. We'll, we'll be right back after this message from one of our sponsors. Oh, life. Times sure have changed. Why, when your mother was a little girl, she learned to fry chicken in a pan. Oh, it was a lot of trouble, but it sure tasted good. Papa, to fry chicken this evenly, I'd have to fry different parts separately with different frying times. That's what Banquet does. Oh, no doubt Banquet chicken is good, but somehow, just not the same. <laughs> You're so right, Papa. Thank goodness for Banquet. <laughs> Say, lady, if you don't mind my asking, what's that great perfume you're wearing? 
Intimate by Revlon. Pardon me, what's that great perfume you're wearing? Intimate by Revlon. Excuse me, what's that great perfume you're wearing? Intimate by Revlon, the fragrance people notice. Hmm, what's that great perfume you're wearing? Intimate by Revlon. Beautiful. We've returned. We're talking with uh, Diane Keaton. You know, people have seen you on the show. They've come up and asked me, and they said, what kind of a gal? She seems, uh, is she putting you on and, uh, and so forth? And I said, no. I said, that's, that's just, you're just like you really are. Are you not? <laughs> so unfortunate for us all. No, no. <laughs> no, you don't be self-deprecating. No, and you shouldn't do that. We yeah. talked about that one no. night. No, right. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm just trying to find out things about you that intrigue me. Yeah. It's hard to find them, isn't yeah. it? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Suppose a, fellow, suppose a nice fellow that you like came to you and said, um, you could do anything you wanted tonight, yeah. or go or whatever. What would please you? What would, what would be your idea of doing something that would be fun and exciting and uh, stimulating and et cetera? Well, gee, just like anyone else, I guess, yeah, you know, I'd go any place. I mean, providing a, that it wasn't, you know, too extreme, like, I, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want to go to a massage parlor or, or uh, oh, well, you know, one I know. of those... Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, you know. You've had, have you ever had fellows say, let's go to a massage parlor? No, actually, no. <laughs> no, the offer's never been there. No, I, uh, no. I, look, I, I'd go any place. Uh, Dancing any, or Sure, whatever. hey, um, if I like some, sure. Sure. Hey, how about you, wouldn't you? I mean, I'm sure that you'd do the same thing that I would do, in, except that you would be different. You would be you, as opposed to me being me. And, that would be uh, the main difference, yeah. Yes. <laughs> You uh, would dance and perhaps eat a few things, like, say, a steak or, right. you know, and I, too, would eat a steak. Yeah, I'm like... Yeah, so that's about it. I mean... <laughs> Another night like shot to hell, night. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a real winner, I tell you. Well, yeah. You, are you currently going? Well, I don't like to be sound like a fan magazine interview, but are you currently going with anyone? Or? I'm currently not going with anyone. <laughs> I'm currently uh, preoccupied with my cats and, you know, a few friends. Yeah. But, no, I'm not going with anyone. Yeah. I, uh, no. Mm -mm. 
Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that girls always have yeah. to, you know, uh, settle down and get married. And she get tired of people asking that. Yeah, yeah. How come you're not married, you know? What's... Yeah, not too many people have asked me that. <laughs> but I guess, uh, yeah, hey, I'm not preoccupied with it right now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's been a rather interesting year in that, you know, I, I have, I've been going around a lot and, and doing those things. I've been working more than right. I have for... What kind of a girl do you play in this uh, Woody Allen picture? Woody's one oh, of my favorite people. It, he's most talented. Yeah, he's a fine it, writer. And... He is, isn't he? He's great. Yeah. I really like him. I think he's really good. Um, yeah, he is. He, uh, it's, it's really great because it's, uh, I play a real jerk. And, and it's something, I mean, it's something that I can really identify with, you know, very easily. I mean, it's just, it was so easy for me to just become that monster. I mean, that sort of, you know, well, uh, that sort of spoiled brat was very easy right. for me to do. And, and it was really fun. It was very flamboyant, you know, and Woody also is a jerk. So, so it was very easy to yeah. be two jerks together <laughs> in a movie. Do you have brothers and sisters? I don't yeah, really I sure this. do. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like them, too. I'm very close to my family. Yeah. What do they do? Are any of them? Uh... Well, my sister Dory is an, is an artist. She's studying art. And mm -hmm. my brother Randy is, uh, he works for my father. Hey. And uh, my sister Robin. I mean, I'm telling you this stuff, and it's all really uninteresting. But uh, I really like them. Uh, and my oh. sister Robin is married. That's nice. And, uh, and my mother and father are married. <laughs> Good. 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 Good old fashioned yes, principles. That's there. right, right, yeah, right. right. And Solid I have stock. two Grammys. And uh, I have all those same things that you, you know, I have all that stuff. And I like it a lot. That's good. You, you like to sing now, don't you? Uh, yeah. You seem to feel more comfortable sometimes when you're singing. Yeah, I don't, oh boy. I guess, you know, I guess it's something that, uh, oh, I won't even try to explain it, yeah. Yeah. I feel more comfortable. Did we have to know anything about the song you're going to do for us? Because oh, I know you have to it's, leave on, uh, it's a, earlier tonight. Yeah, she, I, I really thank you. I, it's, it's a... Um, it's a real uh, famous song. Everybody knows it. A famous song. Yeah, so you're good. <laughs> okay. Now, here's one of the uh, famous songs. Famous song. You want to get over there and get yeah. set? And, uh... Yeah. Oh. All
Something. She does things like that. She's really one. She has a very vulnerable qu quality about her. You it's know. So damn honest. It's so wonderful. It's that's her. Yeah. That's her. She's her. completely I honest. Think I think she really feels that way. Yeah. And she gets up there and does something oh. almost a cappella like that. Every word means something. It's, it's got nice a sweet quality. She's fun. We will uh, be right back. We've got a brief message here, and Sammy Davis is here, and uh, Freddie Prinz, and uh, Irma Bombeck will join us tonight. Oh, let Santa give you a tip about your Christmas tree. I put these in water, but now this one's dried out. Falling needles and messy in a fire hazard. But not this tree. I mix prolonged tree preserver in its water. It's fresh and green with tight needles. See the difference? Take a tip from Santa. Keep the needles on the tree where they belong with prolong. New from Texas. This Christmas, Steve Farrell bought a present for himself, the all-new Dutch Masters cigar jar. He really liked the opaline glass jar with its new seascape design, but the part he liked best was inside. 25 mild Dutch Masters presidents. Steve thinks the Dutch Masters cigar jar is the best present he ever bought for himself and for his wife. We won't tell if you won't. I have to say too much about Sammy Davis. Everyone who's ever watched him knows uh, what a tremendous performer he is. He's a good friend also. And he'll be uh, working December the 7th, which is, what, the day after tomorrow? Mm -hmm. In San Diego at the International Sports uh, Area. And on Sunday, December 9th at the Community Center in Tucson, Arizona. He gets around, doesn't mm -hmm. he? And at the Mill Run Theater in Chicago on December 13th. Would you welcome, please, Sammy Davis. <laughs> Still of the night As I gaze through my window At the moon in its flight My thoughts all stray to you In the still of the night as I lay without slumber Oh, the times without number, darling When I say to you Do you love me as I love you? The chill still
like the moon A grown wind dim Ooh, Lord, on the rim I mean the rim of a hill In the chill And the still Of the night In the still Hello, Sam. Hello, John. Good to see you again. <laughs> Were you out uh, with uh, McMahon the other night? Uh? I was with him last night. He is doing, along with Miss Carr, a yeoman's job at our hotel. He's yeah. breaking it up. That's good. I really mean it, man. The comments, because now that I'm an owner, you dig what I'm saying? That's what I hear, yes. Yes. <sighs> My boss. <laughs> He said to me last night, I gotta tell you what he did. I'm sitting in the place, and I'm the vice president, for those of you nice folks who may not be aware of it, I happen to be legitimately licensed by the Nevada Gaming License Commission, which is, you gotta get a clean bill of health and all that jazz. Uh, but I'm very honored, I'm the first black man to ever be so honored. I have eight points at the Tropicana Hotel, and currently appearing at the Tropicana Hotel is Miss Vicki Carr and my man and my brother, Mr. Ed McMahon. And they're breaking it up. So I'm sitting now, we're after the show, we're in the lounge, and Ed calls over one of the waitresses and says, it's a little warm in here. Tell him to turn it down a little bit. There's an energy crisis going on. And the woman said, yes, Mr. McMahon. I went, wait a minute, I'm a vice president. Don't you want to check with me? <laughs> she didn't even say nothing to me. She went and turned down the... It, and she went and turned it down, man. That was it. Now, you know he big. Yeah. <laughs> what she doesn't realize is that Ed carries his own warming energy with him all the time. <laughs> to him, Admiral Perry could turn the igloo down. What does he know why it's hot? Everybody else would be freezing to death. But I thought it was just wild because those people in Vegas, as you know, yeah. you know, if they don't really dig you the hell, they won't do nothing. They were all around him. Everybody digs him. That's great. So I, I thank you. I thank you thank for you. Oh, thank you nice for doing you. great business along with Vicky, and I thank you for being the friend that you are. Thank and you, you do a good act. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's not just a lot of bo uh, stuff. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean to be rude, but that, that almost slipped out, and I didn't mean that. Yes, I did mean yes, it. I I didn't, you can't say it on television. But it, most people say, well, what is Ed McMahon going to do? You have to see him wherever he is, then you'll see what he does, because it's a good working act. I really mean that, man. Don't you have anything nice to say about me? <laughs> you work the other hotel, John. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Hey. Somebody told me the other day, uh, uh, Joanna saw Altabees, and she said you weren't feeling well or something, or were you? I just, I just went through a thing that I really don't understand. I went up to Lake Tahoe to work at Harris, and I just got through doing the Follies, did the 13 Follies. I've been home every night, and as you know, there is not a lot of carousing around when you're at home and, you, and your old lady's with you every day. You know, you have a few, on the weekend you go whoopee, you stay up till 2.30, and that's the end of it, you know. <laughs> but I went up to Tahoe, couldn't wait to get on. Two days in, the bug hit me. I was out for four days. I got up, the doctor said, you're okay. I went back in, worked three days, right on my knees again. For... I tell you, the straight life is killing me. <laughs> yeah, because you, uh, you have been known in your formative years. Uh, uh, you know, you've gone through a lot of lifestyles and changes yes, in your I life, have. right? No, actually, I haven't changed, society has. Yeah. But you because were all the things that everybody's you going to be about, I was doing it That's in what I'm the old days. <laughs> <laughs> and you were also not as young, you see. That's it. You ever think of that? That's what the doctor told me. So I, I came back, when I left Does that come as a great shock? It always does to me when someone, some doctor tells me that, because I figure I, 
I feel as good as I did when I was 20 or 25. In yeah. fact, it's a lot of ways I feel better mentally and, and mentally. physically. And I'll go out and try to do something. And he says, what do you mean you played six sets of tennis? And I said, I'm a little tired. And he says, well, you played for what? I said, four hours. And he said, how old are you? And I says, I'm 48. And he says, well, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden comes as a great shock. The doctor told me, my doctor said to me, Jerry Blackford said, it's, it's an old, he says, I tell you what you got, Sam. It's called too many candles on the cake. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I went, I, then I dug what he was saying, which means that there is a responsibility, and particularly guys like yourself, I think all three of us, and I'm sure many people in the audience and watching have done the same thing. You used up a lot of energy, man, from the time you were like 20 till you got to be 40. And now it, some of that's got to get paid back somewhere along the line. You can't do it all. You remember the old days when you used to say, I bet I can stay up longer than you can? Yeah, right. And you just stayed up five days looking at each other. Ah, I'm up, see there. It's like when you're in the service, you'd go out for three or four days and you'd come back and Monday or whatever it was, a reveille, and you were just feeling great. That's it. Now you do it, it's in Mount Sinai for a week and a half. <laughs> in traction or something. Well, you know, I, I was. What's the also... longest you've ever stayed up? I don't know. I think four days I did it in Pittsburgh, and that's before I got into drugs, you know. I wasn't... You I went wasn't, through that for a while. Oh, yeah. I, I was called a speed king at one time. Yeah. You know? Then I couldn't deal with it. I, I, I admit it, based upon the fact that I, I went through trips and all kinds of things, and I just couldn't deal with it, man. I couldn't deal with it, which I don't think anybody can. This Not why I be, all. No, no. And, you know, somebody wants to smoke grass, that's their business. But I'm just talking about anything of any kind that messes up your mind, stops you from functioning as a human being, and whatever, whatever excuse you use, in other words, I'm doing this to hide what race I am, what my position is, I can't bear this. I'm I on a tough schedule, play. I gotta right. stay awake, all that. When you come down off your high, all them problems are still facing you, and you gotta deal with it. Right. You know, that's why I, I'm on the drug commission and all that jazz, because I just think it's dumb. And ain't nothing hip about it. And I think a lot of that. I hope we've seen, and some doctors seem to feel that maybe we've seen the, that, that kind of peak in the last few years and the kids are finally getting hip, you know, because it takes their own peer group to tell them. Adults can't go to kids and say, hey, get off of those uppers oh, no. or those downers or all those things. But the kids the same age can eventually get to them and say, as well, you I've said, seen, the problems I've are going to be there. around since, since 69 to 73, now into four. And being on the drug commission out of Washington and all that jazz, and talking to young people, they're doing more. And the, and the only thing that really gripes me now is that, and I'm talking about kids, I can't go into the ghetto and talk to my own young brothers and sisters. Because they don't want to listen to me. They don't want to listen to anyone that it, they consider jive or jamf or hey man, he's bourgeois, he don't know. Yeah. But when their own people who live and deal with the problem within the community doesn't, yeah. then that's where it's heavy. And if you can deal with it on that level and help those young right. brothers and sisters, whether they be black or white, to do their thing within the community, that's where it's important. Because they don't need nobody coming. They don't want me to come into Watts or to Bedford-Stuyvesant no, telling them, listen, and I'm sitting here with all these rings on going, I don't think you should deal in drugs, you know. <laughs> they, they don't want to hear that, man. They I wouldn't get, first of all, I don't think the car would get into the area. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you that. You could turn off the air conditioning to show that you understand. You know, just, just as you go through and then turn it right on as you get out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're but getting too old for but, that. No, no, wait a minute. But the important part is that what is your contribution going to be? What is yours going to be? What is mine going to be in terms of my commitment to my people? So you say, well, what I, what I believe in is this. How can I best help? And if a brother says to you, whether he, again, whether he be black or white, says, give me the money, let me explain it to him where it came from. Don't you show up. Because yeah. you're going to blow it by the time you sit there because the two cats are already mad at the number you didn't <laughs> sing on the Tonight Show. <laughs> you can't win. I'm you can't uh, win, so you say that's the way it's got to be done. Yeah. All right, let me take a break. We'll be right back. The Art of Pool on this new Joan Amoth pool table from Monroe. It's big and sturdy, and it has automatic ball return, and it's straight and true. So when you're shooting good, nothing's going to stop you. Monroe also makes this exciting Joe Namath day-night football game and Bobby Hole hockey, too. There you go, baby. 
123 to 3. You want to rack them up again? Ah, uh, you're a pro. What am I going to do? But when it comes to sports games, Monroe is the pro. To Rip Caldwell, whose flight took off with the score tied. Big rush. He's in trouble. He's back to his own. United Airlines dedicates friendship service. On many of our cross country flights, Rip can hear top college and pro football games and the latest news. Another reason more people choose the friendly skies than any other airline in the land. The friendly skies of your land, United Airlines. Time. Long time. Huh? It's Johnny Brown. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention one thing that when I was talking about the trap, I am very happy that I'm getting a lot of your family there, even though you're not coming. Ed's there now, and Doc comes in with Ann Margaret. It follows uh, follows yeah. Ed yeah. On, on the 12th. We're hear. looking forward to you, sir, Doctor. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's great. Bring your horn if you can. <laughs> <laughs> What do you what do you feel the mood? You feel the mood of doing anything? You want to you want to chant? You want to sing? You want to dance? You want to what are you whatever? Want a little laugh? A little cookout? It doesn't matter to me. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. I, I would like I I would just like to say can I say something before I go into the singing? Sure. <laughs> Same lady wanted to know when I was going to be off. I think. I, I just want to say that this, let's do, I, I do this out of respect for Maud, because it was the nicest compliment the other night when she said, her daughter said to her, you don't understand, Ma, I got to be me, I got to be me. And Maud said, my God, you sound just like Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> so allow me, if you will, to do, I got to be me. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong Whether I find a place in this world or it never belong I gotta be me I gotta be me What else can I be but what I am? I want to live not merely survive and I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive I gotta be me I gotta be me the dream that I see makes me what I am that far away prize the world of success it's waiting for me if I'll heed the call. I won't settle down or settle for less. As long as there's a chance that I can have it all. I'll go it alone if that's how it must be. I can't be right for somebody else. If I'm not right for me, I gotta be me, and I gotta be free. Daring to try to do it or die, I gotta be me, and I'll go in alone, if that's how it must be. 
I can't be right for somebody else If I'm not right for me I gotta be free And I'm gonna be free Daring to try to do it or die I gotta be me Do you, do we have time? I was almost in my dressing room when I heard the applause. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta put me, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta allow me the privilege. I haven't, I haven't worked for about two and a half, three weeks. And when I come to John's show, it's like visiting his home. And it's, uh, and the audiences are groovy. And I hope you nice folks at home who are watching do not think that I'm trying to take advantage. The truth of the matter is I am. Can you give me this? Now, wait, wait, bass. When we didn't go do that, we just gonna have something. Give me this. Pick your own key and do it. It's been three long years Do you still dig me? If I don't see no ribbon Round the old, old oak tree Then I'll stay on the bus Forget about us Put the blame on me If I don't see a ribbon Round the old, old oak tree Who can take a sunrise, take a look at you, cover it with chocolate or a miracle or two, the candy man, the candy man can, yeah the candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good, well the candy man makes everything he bakes satisfying and delicious, talk about your childhood wishes, you can even eat the dishes up. <laughs> yeah, 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 Feeling, yes, I do. Do you get the feeling through and through? Wow! Do you get the spirit in you? Yeah, yeah, I wanna hear you. I wanna hear you. I wanna feel you say, I got the spirit. Ha! <clears throat> Ah, I 
That's great. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Thanks to the gentleman in the orchestra. Of course, my man, George Rose. Jack is all We'll take a break. We're coming right back. Arnell Blend 100. It's a whole new kind of Arnell. Arnell Blend 100, an easy care fabric that feels like fine cotton. Arnell Blend 100, Medici does it in a lot of great prints. You can never get enough of them. Jazz up tonight. Oh, that's good jazz tonight. Yeah. I forgot to ask, where are you working New Year's? Are you going to 
Are you working New Year's Eve? I'm doing, for the first time, I'm going to do a thing here at the Century Plaza in Los Angeles on New Year's That's Eve because right. I've, I've got right. my kids. And we're taking, Altavis and I are taking the kids down to Hawaii. Vacation. And uh, then they come back and I'm going to do New Year's. See, usually I'm, I'm in Vegas, you know. Right. And I, I don't know how it happened this year, but they've got Wayne Newton. Wayne has an army cot in the back of the hotel. Yes. Wayne lives there, you know. He does 30 weeks a he year. He says, Myron Kuhnsek, Wayne's here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm going I'm to be here, and I'm going okay. to do, do the show. Great. I hope it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. We've got some surprises coming in. I think the people will enjoy it. We have a new young comedian with us tonight. And as you know, this is a hard commodity to find in this business, all right? Young Same guys way. who uh, can come out in front of an audience and uh, not have uh, a great deal of exposure and try to find people accept what they do. And this gentleman, his name is Freddie Prince, he's just 19 years old and graduated about six months ago from the uh, High School of Performing Arts in New York. And he works in New York at the Improvisation in a place called Catch a Rising Star. And this is his first appearance on The Tonight Show. So make him feel welcome. You sound like yeah. you're in a good mood. Would you welcome Freddie Prince? Yeah, Freddie. <laughs> Uh, I'm from New York, and uh, it's a weird town because it's a melting pot. We have all kind of people, even Armenian midgets, you know? And like, I come from two backgrounds, Hungarian and Puerto Rican. But yeah, I'm a Hungarian. <laughs> it's like a very heavy title, because I could never figure out how my parents met, a gypsy and a Puerto Rican. I asked my mother, she said they're on the subway trying to pick each other's pocket. <laughs> My mother, you know, my mother always talks about the wedding. Oh, the wedding was beautiful. You should have been there. I was. <laughs> my Puerto Rican relatives, my Puerto Rican relatives went all out. They go out and charter a subway, right? <laughs> the greatest wedding. And we moved to a neighborhood in Manhattan called Washington Heights. It's like a, a suburb of Harlem. You know, slums with trees. Even the birds are on drugs. They don't know how to fly, they fall out of trees. They come up to you, you know, tweet, tweet, turkey, give me a quarter. <laughs> really, the rats wear sneakers and dungarees, you know? Never I like roaches, though. Because you step on a roach, you hear them snap, but as soon as you lift your foot, they run like hell. That's right, it's like they know. He thinks he got us, come on, you know. And we have the kind of superintendent in the building. It's a six floor run up, by the way. It's the kind of building, a super, never wants to fix anything, but he still wants a key to your apartment. Right, in case of an emergency, like he needs a few dollars. <laughs> we have Mr. Rivera. Whenever you go to complain to Mr. Rivera, he answers the door with his six kids, so you feel bad. <laughs> Say, Rivera, man, no hot water for 11 years now. Right, Rivera's answer, it's not my job, man. <laughs> Don't bother me with your trolling. I don't speak English. Boom, slams the door. And gives the people the wrong impression of Puerto Ricans. Most people think all we do is stand on street corners going, hey, baby. <laughs> what, you can't talk with me? I don't need you if you concede it, you know. <laughs> But like, that's not true. You see it's in department stores too. You know, <laughs> not only street corners, in department stores you see us, why'd you back, man, with the clothes rack, you know? <laughs> My neighbor is crazy, it's just like that. Like, for instance, you cannot own a yellow car in Washington Heights. I tried it, I had a yellow car, stopped for a red light, a guy jumps in. 84th Street. <laughs> the hell you mean you ain't a cab? I'll stick you up anyway, what do you think about that? So I bought myself a Puerto Rican mobile. It's a 64 Chevy. <laughs> Pom poms on the antennas. Saran wrap partition. And standard in all Puerto Rican mobiles, a little dog in the back window with the head. <laughs> I always get in trouble. I don't know how it happens, right? My mother gives me a lot of advice. And it makes me get in more trouble, because all mothers say this, right? Don't wear those ripped underwear. What if a car hits you and they take you to the hospital? <laughs> all my 
my life I thought that meant the first thing the doctor does. All right, check his drawers. <laughs> oh, call his mother. Look at that hoe, yeah. She gave me a lot of advice before I came out here to L.A. She's, she says, have a good time, enjoy yourself, you know. First thing I did was I went to the zoo. The L.A. zoo is great. But I understand the, the sign in the monkey house says, please do not annoy the monkeys. What, are they busy? <laughs> How do you get on a monkey's nerves? <laughs> All right. Hey, chimp, King Kong was a fruit. What do you think about that? <laughs> You know who really annoys me? That pervert, Mr. Whipple. <laughs> the Charmin commercial, you ever see that? Well, I saw that commercial in Spanish in Puerto Rico. He goes, ladies, no squishy, squishy with the Charmin. <laughs> Ay, Dios mío, Charmin, I love you, te quiero tanto. Eh? What do you mean, no squishy, Charmin? I squish you, get out of here. You know, just... <laughs> and if they can have that, why can't they have a Puerto Rican astronaut? Right, being Puerto Rican, that annoys me. I wrote to the proper authorities, I said, why isn't there a Puerto Rican astronaut? I get a letter back. What are you, kidding? All the way to the moon, you blow the horn, play the radio? <laughs> Is it you stick your head out the window? Hey, baby, mommy. <laughs> Probably figure we'll wear a red foil spacesuit with a vest, you know, a little chain. What they're really afraid of is that we'll get to the moon, unload the moon buggy, the hubcaps will be missing. <laughs> And I, I was wondering, if they can have that, they can have a Puerto Rican president. A man, if there was a Puerto Rican president and he got in trouble, how would he pass the buck? It's not my job, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Amen, huh? This is something. <laughs> oh. You know, there's no greater thrill for me personally to have somebody come out here who's, who's unknown and stand up in front of an audience and absolutely wipe them out the first appearance uh, coast to coast. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. You're going to look like You're, you're going to do fine, really. A lot of people have started on this show. And you can always sense when there's, there's something there that the audience likes them right away. Yeah. They gotta like you. You can do, a lot of guys come out and do comedy and they say, uh, oh, I don't like him. He's funny, but we don't like him. You got, you got that nice empathy with the audience. Thank you very much. And it's delighted to have you here. Thank we'll you. take a break. We're coming right back. Sears Lady Kenmore Dishwasher. Gives you freedom from scraping, freedom from pre-rinsing, because it has two hot water jets that scour dishes, and a stainless steel pulverizer for soft food waste. We call Sears Lady Kenmore the freedom maker, because it gives you freedom to do more important things. In a world where everyone's taller than he is, Fisher Price creates a world where everyone's smaller. The Fisher Price Play Family Village. There's a theater, a rooftop restaurant, a barber shop, a mailman to deliver the mail. And of course, there's a village fireman. Then, after a busy day, our Play Family Village pulls in its sidewalks for the night and goes to sleep.
welcome back to our All Minority Review tonight. Uh, <laughs> what did you say your mother said before you came out here to ask? Uh, my mother said, she said to me, uh, ask Johnny Carson if there's really water in the cup. Water? Coffee. Coffee in the cup. Coffee. Yeah. It's really great to have you score. This is your first, uh, you said you've done a few other things. You've worked the Playboy Club and yeah. you did a show back in New York. Uh, but you've got it in your mind, it's what you want to do for a living now, huh? This is it. <laughs> That's great. Who writes your material, may I ask? Uh, me so far. Keep I'm, it that way. Oh. You're good. <laughs> you can do that. That's a big help. But we thought since everything is swinging so well tonight, and uh, Louis is sitting in, Louis Belson with our orchestra tonight, and uh, we thought we might let the band cook for a while. You got something there? Uh, yeah. Louis Belson original composition entitled Space and Home. Space and Home? Right. Go. Right. Thank you, boys. We'll be back after this word. Now there's a line of top quality audio products priced for everyone from Superscope. Take it from a guy who really knows. Superscope Stereo is one fantastic stereo buy. It's from the same company that brings you famous Moran Stereo. Yet, it's priced for every budget-minded music lover. 
Discover the quality line of Superscope stereo and four-channel receivers, compacts, tape decks, and speaker systems. Really smart stereo shoppers don't give a toot for anything but Superscope stereo. One picture and a Superscope cassette recorder can make it happen all over again. Fill your glasses with champagne. The love and happiness years to come. Pictures just aren't enough. Get a budget price Superscope cassette recorder with a built-in condenser microphone today. And keep tomorrow forever. This has been a crazy night. Crazy night. Where are you working next? Uh, uh, you got I'll be at the Playboy Club in New York this Friday and Saturday. Right. And uh, those are good clubs and uh, to try out things because you get a, a, a very audience show. there, and that, that's great. And they're they're very hip. Yeah. Will you, you come back? back? Uh, hey, I'd love to. Do our show again? Love to. You got the same audience? Same audience. <laughs> Before we go to I have to apologize to Ms. Irma, Mrs. Irma Bombeck, who uh, has a fascinating book. She's, because uh, we, we ran a little long tonight, and she will be back with us. Uh, she said she's going on tour right now. But she has a very funny book called, uh, called I Lost Everything in the Postnatal De Depression. And uh, it's not fair to bring somebody out and just give them four or five minutes, especially when they have so many things to say as Ms. Bombeck does. And she'll be back with us soon, though. Um, do we take a break here and then come back? All right. A one, a two, a three.
Haven't we said goodnight before? We keep saying goodnight and we never leave. This is a sham. We're gonna go to two o'clock in the morning and people are waiting for sermonette. Uh, so you're gonna be at Mill Run in Chicago, Sam, and when? Uh, the 13th? Yeah. I do, Mill, I do Mill Run. Uh, but San Diego before that, right? San Diego on, on Friday. Right. Which I, I kind of appreciate doing because I, I don't get a chance to work San Diego in Phoenix, I mean in Tucson. Right. Uh, but it would be good. People will come if they want to come. They'll see a good show. If they don't want to come, they'll stay home and watch Kojak or whatever. <laughs> they they'll come and see a show. They'll come see, they'll come see a show. And they'll have a good time. There will be no, there will be no uh, parading in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Sensational as usual. Thank you, Freddie, for being with us. Good night.